Welcome, good morning, buenos dias. Thank you so much for being here today. This is part of the Hispanic Response and Recovery Plan that we have put together to make sure that in a daily basis, we bring experts that can help educate, illuminate, and enlighten our leaders so that we can be better informed, take better decisions, and share it with our members all across US Hispanics. It is very important because as we all repeat every day and we know US Hispanics have been disproportionately affected by COVID-19 at the health level. We have the highest mortality rate on the country. Economically, our small businesses, entrepreneurs, and our independent workers have been affected the most because we work in those areas that have been shut down completely, restaurants, hotels, everywhere. But also we're disproportionately exposed. We're disproportionately exposed because Latinos were in the front lines, we're running the country. 19 million Hispanics work in essential functions in the country, either in hotel, either in food supply, either in healthcare, healthcare, our agriculture. So it's pretty important that we know the facts that we get this time to be an expertise in some area, build our build our expertise and highlight the the solutions that we might be taking together. And in that spirit, it is fantastic for me to welcome. Phil Thomas, Phil Thomas, who's the CEO and the chairman of the Cannes Lion, the Cannes Advertisement Festival. Phil, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Thank you. How's your Spanish? Spanish is not so good. Um, I'll be honest <laughs> about that. I think we might have to do this in English. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Phil, it's, it's fantastic to be able to have you here for a lot of the uh, Hispanic uh, created uh, a world. Uh, the Can Advertisement Festival is, um, you know, like is is like for everyone else, for every creative in the world. It's like the Oscars, the maximum uh, prize that you can ever get. But maybe some people, um, everybody has heard about the festival, but not everybody knows Phil Thomas. Phil, just tell us a little bit, a little bit about you. You know, like well, where, where, go. how, when. Yeah, sure. I took over the festival in 2006, actually, which is quite a long time ago now. I became the CEO in 2006. And previous to that, I'd been in, uh, in other kinds of media, particularly around magazine media. I'm a magazine journalist by trade. And uh, I was a, uh, a film journalist and the editor of a movie magazine. Um, and uh, then I became a publisher and ran a variety of different magazine publishers around the world. And lived in Sydney for a while and uh, back in London and in New York and I took over the festival in 2006 when it was a very different type of uh, event from what it is now and of course we went through the the global financial crisis in 2009 so I kind of fe I feel like I may have been here before but of course we haven't really been here before because in 2009 I remember thinking things couldn't really ever be as bad as that um, I didn't realize that things could actually be a whole lot worse than that, which is really where we are right now. But I do want to understand, so you, you, you were a journalist by training or a filmmaker by training? I was a journalist by oh. training, yeah. So I, was a, I, was a, um, uh, I specialized uh, towards the end of my journalistic career, I specialized in, uh, in uh, movie journalism and I edited a, a film magazine in the UK. Oh, fantastic. And, uh, and, and you've been a CEO 2006 to 2016, then you took up also the chairmanship. And so you've been CEO and chairman from uh, since 2016. You mentioned actually that you were part of the global financial crisis. And I would love to hear about that. How did you, how, how was, how can you draw parallels from there? What happened, you know, like to the festival itself, to creativity in general? What do you think and what are you seeing now? Well, it's interesting because when I took over the festival, interestingly, I'd been to Cannes many times before for the, for the Cannes Film Festival. And that, of course, is a very large, it's a huge global event. And when I went to Cannes Lions, first of all, I was surprised at how small it was, really. It was a, a, an event for creatives in agencies uh, brands didn't go and platforms didn't go and media owners didn't go. It was really very small. Um, and in a sense, looking back, the financial crisis of 2009, which hit us very, very hard, 
it, it, it was almost like pruning a tree because what happened was that all the entries, the inscriptions into the festival fell. The people who came to Cannes, the number of people who came fell. It was a dramatic year for us. But what followed was a blooming, I suppose you could say, of creativity, just like pruning a tree. And post-2009, the festival grew massively and it grew in many different areas. And what was happening really was that the festival was reflecting the world of creativity because the world of creativity was, was blooming as well. And, and I think the global financial crisis kind of came, it, it, it represented the end of one kind of world and the beginning of another kind of world. And I suppose what's interesting, if you can stay curious and not too frightened about what's happening at the moment, what's interesting is what will happen after this particular crisis. If you look back at some of the work, the things that we did and we innovated with the festival post the financial crisis, the categories that we added, the different types of creativity that we, that we saw and that we celebrated, the, the partnerships that we built with people like the United Nations and, um, and many others, it all really came from that pruning. So I suppose now I'm looking at this crisis and thinking, I wonder what, what will blossom after this crisis. But what you're saying, which is natural um, and, and intuitive, but nonetheless, it's important to mention is um, when things are bad, creativity tends to spike because you need innovative thinking and you need to start looking at things differently, um, which is what you saw, is that correct? That's absolutely right. And we, it's not really, uh, it's not a theory. We've got the data to, to show it. And, uh, we, and that data is around the, the, the blossoming of the different types of creativity that was being uh, entered into the festival and that was winning the lions. And the data is around just the, the vast growth of the kind of people who were involved in creativity. Every business and every industry had to find a way through. And the way that they did that was, was through, through creativity and through innovation and through ideas. So that, that was definitely something that we saw. Is there anything else that you find interesting from the data that you have that actually speaks about that transition and that, uh, that trend? Um, well, if you look at, for instance, the budgets, if you, if you do an analysis of the size of a budget versus the likelihood to win a lion, before the global financial crisis, there was a correlation. So in other words, the more money you had, the more likelihood you were going to potentially win a lion. But that correlation broke after the financial crisis. And actually now there's absolutely no correlation between how much money you've got or how big your budget is and your chances of winning a lion. So I think that shows how creativity does, it does bloom when there is constraint and it blooms when there's, there's less money and it blooms when there's less options. And that's certainly, I think, where we are currently. And that's hopefully what will happen is the response will, will release a, a kind of a flurry of creativity. I love that. And I, I actually remember what, now that you're mentioning, I think I've been to the festival 16 times or something like on that ridiculous number, not every year, but you know, like particularly in different jobs, different times. But I do remember being uh, going and thinking pretty much mad, mad you know, mad men, very straightforward Madison, you know, Madison Street and just like the, the, the stereotypical uh, agency and creatives. And then all of a sudden there were like other players and very different players, even, you know, like not only brands, but also tech companies and all of a sudden countries started being, you know, like part of the people that were submitting um, uh, and we're, we're players overall. And in that sense, um, I do remember, and Phil, let's talk the story. Let's, let's tell the story just because you mentioned the United Nations and that partnership. So I remember actually knocking your door probably one year after uh, we launched the Sustainable Development Goals and I was working at the United Nations and um, probably pretty much on the knocking door, pain in the neck type of thing. Do you want to tell the story about the SDG Lions and how, um, how that came to life? Yes, I mean, I mean it was obviously um, you were hugely helpful in that. And the idea was that the creative community could use their, their collective strength and power to help to 
solve some of the problems in the world, but I think also more importantly, build a bridge between organizations like the United Nations and the wider population. And that bridge is a bridge of communication. And I suppose we both saw an opportunity to try to help where we can build that bridge because certainly in my experience what what I can see when organizations like the UN come together but not just the UN other other organizations like this when they come together with the communicators and the creative people quite often the language they use and their priorities are very very different and that leads to a lack of understanding and not really the work that we need to to push these ideas forward so the idea of the SDG lines was to bring the two communities together and to highlight and to celebrate the really great work that was done, that is done by brands and agencies in trying to make the world a better place. And um, you know more about it than me in many ways because you've been on our jury um, more than once and you've seen some of that fantastic work and indeed um, awarded the lions to some of that fantastic work as well. But I do think that the festival, I mean, like, you know how much of a fan I am of the festival and how much I think you're a catalyst uh, for change. But I started seeing how, you know, the festival reflects the world and consumers were starting to buy with their beliefs and vote with their hearts. And every time more, there was a sense of purpose. And I saw that in the festival year after year, getting more and more entries that were purpose-led, that were, uh, you know, like leading with their hearts. And I think that the value proposition was like, hey guys, we have a framework. Why don't you put all of the things that you have uh, popping up as, you know, like people that care about climate, people that care about gender, people like all of that in one framework, which I think uh, led to the birth of the SDG Lions, but also will lead to the birth of you know like what's uh, what's happening now with uh, so much creativity that has to be um, you know like has to be put into solving this global crisis. This is for the first time in many 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 decades that we have as the world uh, being united under one single storm. We're not leaving it. We're, this is not. We're not in the same boat. But we're all all in the same storm. And I think that you have seen that and you changed radically what you're doing with the festival this year. So everybody. Everybody, uh, you know, like everybody that was so much looking forward to going to the Fan Advertisement Festival in June, then you moved it to October. And then tell us what's, uh, what's happening with the festival this year. So we've, uh, we've chosen to cancel the festival. There are really clear reasons for that. And I think now it's not even a debate. You know, the festival was to take place in June. Clearly that can't happen. We postponed it to October. I think most people would agree that there's very, very unlikely that any events really will happen um, in 2020 at all. So the question then was, okay, so what can we do instead? And I think there are a lot of event organizers who have tried to create what they call virtual events. So they're kind of putting their event online. But what we want to do is acknowledge the fact that that is actually impossible. <laughs> so anybody who's been to Cannes particularly would understand that that's impossible. And the best analogy I can use is that um, a food delivery um, service is not a restaurant online because it, it doesn't have the waiting staff, it doesn't have the menus, it doesn't have the ambiance, it doesn't have the service, it doesn't have... It's the same thing, you're eating some food, but it's not a restaurant, <laughs> you know, it's not a delivery of a restaurant. And so we're really clear that we're not going to put the Festival of Creativity online because that's impossible. You can't do all of the things that people get out of the festival online. But what you can do is you can look at some of the, the customer needs that we have. Why do people go there? Let's look at why they go there and then which of those things can we try to replicate online. And there are some really obvious ones, like for instance, we do a lot of training and a lot of learning and a lot of inspirational talks. Well, you can present those online. Uh, we invite people to, to be creative and to use Scam Lions as a platform for their creativity. Well, we can do, we can do that online. Um, people come to Cam Lions to, to be put together and to network and to meet each other. And to a certain extent, not completely, but to a certain extent, we can also do that online. So we want to be very clear about what, what we can do. So in the month of June, we're going to be having 
content throughout the month of June every day. And then in the week, which is the 26th, 22nd to the 26th of June, in the week that we would all be down in Cannes, we'll be producing content every single day, all day, um, some of it live, some of it not live, and rolling that on a spool, on a, on a loop, so that wherever you are in the world, you can enjoy, um, enjoy the learning and the inspiration that can, can bring. And we're, we're, we can do, we're doing that for nothing. It's completely free to everybody. And we just want to try to be a galvanizing force for the creative community in the world to come together in this moment, um, instead of going to the festival, coming together in a slightly different way. And so how can, um, how can people, I mean, like uh, uh, for everyone uh, that is watching for the agencies, the Hispanic agencies, and for those of us uh, that, you know, like the Hispanic creative uh, world here in America has united through CMC and Circulo Creativo, all the creatives are working towards a campaign together uh, to help mitigate the impact of COVID in, his, in the Hispanic community, to help elevate that narrative of Hispanics disproportionately affected so that we can bring better solutions and that uh, we can be a better model for all of us. Tell us how can we get involved in the festival and what is like it's called the do you do you have an official name for the festival now this year? Yes it's called Lions Live so that's the Very name well. of the festival and uh, yeah absolutely we want to highlight and we want to showcase great work that's trying to alleviate the problem or to at least using the skills that our industry have to, to, to do what our industry can do to help the situation. So we're very open to that. We've got a platform online on our website already uh, called Create, Progress Through Creativity, and you can send us your ideas. We can showcase those ideas. So we're always, always looking for that. Um, and in fact, you know, going back to how creativity boomed after the last uh, global financial crisis, one of the interesting things that did happen since then was the bloom of the uh, Hispanic creativity. Um, not only in the United States, uh, which of course has won, the Hispanic community have won many, many um, ideas, uh, lions for their ideas, but also in Latin America as well. I mean, since the last financial crisis, so many countries in Latin America have won lions for the very first time, whether that's Peru or Colombia or Ecuador, all of them have won in the last 10 years. So, so again, we're very aware of the creativity coming out of Latin America and it is um, amongst the most vibrant in the world. So we're very keen to, to hear that. I think there was a question down there about the website. Yeah. So it's called, if you go to canlines.com, on there there's a, there's a, a link to uh, progress through creativity and that's where you'll find it. Yeah, and we will put that, uh, we distribute this uh, content film uh, to everyone in the Hispanic Star Alliance and the ambassador. So we'll make sure to include that website. Um, talk about a little bit about that. I remember having, um, having heard you once talk about the ratio of entry per, uh, per award or something like that. Um, about like either Hispanic creativity or yeah, I think that Hispanic creativity or Hispanic as in Latin America creativity uh, that we don't put as many entries and nevertheless we win higher. What what was that percentage? Just tell like like make us feel good here. Well, it is one of the interesting. We we like looking at the data and um, people may not know, but there is a there's an average chance of winning a lion globally, which is about three percent. So, if you put one hundred pieces of work into the festival, you have on average the chance to win. You, on average, you would win three lions uh, from a hundred pieces of work. Three percent. Um, in the United States, uh, it's higher as an average. It's higher. It's more like five percent as an average. But if you look at specifically the uh, creative community, the Hispanic work that goes into Cannes, um, depending on the year, it's roughly ten to twelve percent chance uh, that they've won from the work that they've put in. So, what, in other words, what I'm saying is. Um, their work is more successful. <laughs> it's more successful than the average in the world, and it's more successful than the average in the rest of the United States. So I suppose what that means is that the work is, um, and there is less work, of course, but, the, but, but, but it's punching way above its weight. And that's something we've seen really ever since the community started entering in large numbers um, eight, seven, eight years ago. That's fantastic. So um, that is a very strong invitation for all of us to make sure that we understand that we have a higher percentage. So let's get more entries. Let's get more 
um, attention to this. So progress through creativity is a way to get work, showca uh, work showcased, but overall participation, June 26 to 30, the way that you were going to have the festival live, you would have- uh, 20, Sorry, live. 22nd to the 22nd to 26th. 22nd to 26th of June, uh, Lions Live. And so people can come and see best work uh, practices, you know, like sessions, is that it? What, what is the invitation, Phil, for people to come? And this is for free to uh, spend hours looking at best work and looking at uh, hearing sessions. Um, yeah, we've got, we've got a lot of different types of content. So there'll be speeches, there'll be panels, there'll be discussions, there'll be inspirational content, there'll be highlights from the work from the past, from work from the past. There'll be an opportunity to meet people online and, and network online. So there are a number of different streams that we're doing and we're putting it together right now with our partners. And uh, I must say it's looking, it's looking, it really is looking quite exciting. Fantastic, and we will submit as well uh, an entry. But you know, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the people when the cancel the, the festival was cancelled were scared that one of the most like important incentives for creatives uh, to create work was to win a lion, and that it was not going to be there in a time that was needed the most. But what you're saying, based on uh, your experience in the past, in times of crisis, this is when creatives do not necessarily need more incentive. Uh, do need more and more incentives. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And um, w the reason we cancelled the awards was simply because we were hearing from the agencies that they didn't have the time or the money or the or the focus to be able to create the entries. Not that they didn't have the focus to be creative. That's a different thing. So what they were saying to us: Could we have a year where we we don't have to worry? No, we don't have to worry about anyone else winning a lion because we don't have the time to create our our entries. So for the next year, for 2021, there'll be an eligibility period for the whole 24 months. So any work that was done that would have been entered into the 2020 festival will roll over into the 2021 festival and we'll be hopefully getting together, celebrating great creativity when this crisis will, we hope, be way behind us. And do you think that 2021 will go back uh, business as usual as can in, in the south of France the way we know it? I certainly would like to think that. I suppose nobody knows exactly how things are gonna, gonna pan out, are they? And uh, a lot of people are saying that uh, nothing will be the same again. I think one thing that will be the same again is people's desire to be together. Um, events like Can Lions bring people together. Uh, and I think the talk of restaurants no longer existing and places where people come together no longer existing, I don't think that's right because I think humanity really needs to be together. So that's one thing that won't change for sure. And uh, Phil, uh, Phil Thomas, CEO and chairman of the Can Advertisement Festival. Um, I've seen the transition of getting the festival with, uh, you know, like with a bigger heart, but also browner, with more desire to include voices of diversity and inclusion. I, I celebrate you, I command you for that. And I will always be an advocate as long as, you know, like I, I've, seen, I've seen how closely you want genuinely to engage gender in the conversation, diversity and inclusion in the conversation. We will continue working with you on that path uh, overall. And so I invite everyone in the Hispanic leadership uh, to follow what uh, Phil Thomas is doing with the Can Advertisement Festival to submit entries uh, to continue and follow the Lion's Life. Phil, any final word for the Hispanic leadership here? No, I think just to say good luck, and I hope that uh, I hope that your businesses are, 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 are working their way through this. It's a very difficult time for all of us, as you can imagine. When you run events, you realise how difficult that must be. But I just wish everybody well, and I look forward to better times when we can all be together again. Fantastic. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you before the Lions Live for sure. But ideally, we can again post something together for September during the time of the UN General Assembly to showcase um, even, you know, like that work uh, when, when we're in better times. Phil Thomas, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thanks very much indeed. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.